began our professional learning journey in the school year of 2016-2017. Our school had just spent the last four years establishing a writing continuum for K-6. After analyzing our comprehensive needs assessment, we determined math as an area of growth. As a school, we researched best practices to ensure the school-wide strategy we chose would be best for our students. Fortunately that year, John Hattie released his new book, Visible Learning for Mathematics. Hattie referenced the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics and their eight effective mathematical teaching practices. We discussed each in length and finally determined to focus on facilitating mathematical discourse as our powerful instructional practice. We then developed our SMART Eagle that students would independently solve grade appropriate real world math problems. And we would monitor this through the Smarter Balanced Assessments, our Universal Screener, and our Grade Level Common Assessments. As a school, we began professional development in choosing rich tasks, orchestrating mathematical discourse, rigor, and asking the right questions, but our teachers needed more. In the school year of 2017 to 2018, we participated in the Hawaii Lab Cohort Program. Hawaii Lab Cohort, which is a teacher learning community, is anchored in a community of practice, which really means that we really place a lot of emphasis on um, sharing knowledge and creating new knowledge together and on our relationships with one another because I, I think that it's through, it's through building um, relationships with each other and building that trust provides um, a space for teachers to take risks. So the Hawaii Lab Cohort Cycle of Instruction includes four components. First, teachers set quarterly goals and then apply these goals to their classroom instruction. They then reflect on their goals and the impact of their instruction on student learning, and they extend their practice by building on their content area knowledge and pedagogy. So the umbrella of focus is um, basically what teachers kind of decide at the beginning of the cohort what they kind of want to focus on. So it might be a teacher practice, it might be some kind of strategy for students, whatever it's that is related to whatever they want to teach for math. And then um, they come to a con consensus on what they want to do and we all agree on it. And then from that they pick a raindrop, which is basically what they want to focus on under that umbrella. So ours for this year is um, math talk, discourse in mathematics, and everybody picks something different based on the text that they're reading. So some picked um, that they want to talk about um, revoicing with students, or they want to talk about partner talk, whatever it is for them. And then it changes each quarter. So we want to look at what do you want to try next? So they build the first quarter, it's been going well, what's the next step? We also want to scaffold for them and also increase their knowledge and understanding and then what helps kids be successful. So we try to add and build more each time. The cohort is a quarterly 10-week cycle of professional learning that supports teachers conducting mini action research. In the planning stage, teachers would develop their own individual quarterly goals based on research that they felt would move their practice forward as well as meet the needs of their students. The content area facilitators would provide coaching and or feedback on their goals to ensure successful implementation. It's not just um, here's a menu that's going to work for every teacher. They get really specific and say I want to focus on this for myself, my own personal growth, and then they get to do that and work on that. During the apply phase, peer observation visits were a key component of the process to support reflection and self-assessment of the goals. The cohort would observe an entire math lesson, gathering evidence supporting the lead teachers and debriefing with that teacher after the lesson. We then followed up with the targeted professional development that was aligned to the cohort focus and our goals for that quarter. We were discussing weekly what was working and seeking advice for what was not. Monthly meetings were focused on reflection. When we do our observations, just like we do just-in-time intervention for the kids, they give us specific just-in-time intervention for us, like, oh, you did this, just do this, and you'll help the children understand, and it was very powerful. With the norms that we've created, uh, I think you're always looking at the positive, and then you can use what you learn or what you observe in, and include it into your own practice. In the reflecting phase, we incorporated structured conversations around student work. We shared artifacts that helped us reach our goals or evidence of us meeting our goals. 
In the extend phase, we independently read and engaged in professional dialogue around our anchor text. We would share how we were incorporating the strategies in our own classrooms. There are three substantial outcomes from this cycle of continuous improvement. First, our teachers gained a lot of confidence in their pedagogy. They took the research in theory, and with the support of their cohort, they were successful. Most professional development stops at the research or theory part, and it's usually up to the teacher to bring the theory into practice. In the Hawaii lab cohort, they're able to try new strategies knowing that their team will support them and guide them every step of the way. The cohort ensures the success in trying new strategies, which will minimize the risk. Second, we notice through walkthroughs that our students are more confident in speaking and providing evidence for their opinions. They're not afraid to speak up or ask for help. They have become risk takers and now it's okay to make mistakes because that is how we learn. They crave for collaboration knowing that teamwork helps make the problems easier and it's imperative to work in a team effectively. Third, the cohort is now willing to share their knowledge with the staff. Historically, our school has been very traditional with classrooms viewed as silos. With the Hawaii Lab cohort, the teachers realize how important it is to collaborate and how efficient the work becomes when they work together. They've gained the confidence to not only do what they need to do in the classroom, but to also break down those walls to share with the entire school. They're all very nice to me <laughs> and very positive and so that was uh, but they gave me feedback that made me uh, realize why oh, I'm on the right track so I'm on the right track and especially Candace our um, our leader is gave positive feedback and then also I liked it when they gave things that oh I could have done or things that I usually do but I didn't get a chance to or uh, I wanted to do but I didn't get a chance to so, uh, so I thought that was uh, very good feedback. So what this cohort did was walk me through the steps. So what, um, you know, as I'm ready to take the next step, they said, okay, that will be your next goal. So I thought that the process of um, quarterly goals, setting quarterly goals, and then allowing um, time to practice it in your class, and then you're accountable to the group and giving them feedback on you know, the outcome of your goals. And, so I think uh, the whole process is, um, is uh, helpful, yeah. Yes, I would encourage um, any, um, any participant to be involved in a cohort. You know, at first, you know, and I'm more, I have a tendency to be an introvert, and I don't like to present myself, and I don't like, um, I do like feedback, but I like it in a quietness of, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. But um, I think getting out of your comfort zone, um, really, I think it's worth it. And so overall, I would encourage anyone at any point in you know, their um, career to get into a cohort. Teaching with the Department of Education for over 25 years, this is by far the most powerful um, professional development because it's differentiated where we set our goals and the content specialists then give us feedback on our goals, relating it to the new research and helping us implement it in the classroom. Teachers are the greatest variable in the classroom and therefore also worth investing in and thinking about how do teachers learn best. And if we believe that they learn best through reflection and through community, then a lab cohort is a great way to create that community of practice and encourage that individualized, differentiated, job-embedded learning. I wish we could have had our entire staff be a part of the math cohort. Because of the positive feedback we got from the cohorts, we've asked them to share their knowledge with our entire staff. Um, they will be leading our staff in professional development at our next faculty meeting, uh, taking our staff through readings, um, set goal setting, and hopefully making um, the, what they learned a part of our entire staff. Um, here at Manawili School, we know collaboration matters but through the cycle of improvement, we now know that providing that structure for collaboration to happen matters more. 
Um, our cycle of continuous improvement gives us focus and helps us to remain vigilant on increasing student achievement.